Hi friends. It's hard to believe another week has gone by, but here we are. And so today um, I want to talk a little bit about perfectionism. I wonder how many of you listening would consider yourself perfectionists. I definitely have that um, characteristic, if you want to call it that. Uh, and I think I've always had it. I, I shared when I was talking about uh, my issue with doing dishes and uh, how even even though I hated doing dishes, I like to organize. I like to organize my mom's drawers, put things in the right place, in the right order, and all that. And you know, when the time came, as I grew older and I took my parents' faith as my own, I wanted to be a Christian in the right way. I wanted to be the best Christian I could, a perfect Christian. Hmm. Yeah, we'll get to that. It's kind of uh, an oxymoron, perfect Christian, right? If I could be that, then I wouldn't need Christ. Anyway, getting ahead of myself. So, you know, I, I, I really did. It's not a bad thing to want to, to, to have uh, zealousness for the Lord and, and to want to really get to know Him. That's exciting. That's the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. However, you can take that too far. And so it's, the, and, the, and a problem can be is how do I know when I've done enough? How do I know when I'm being a good enough Christian? How do I know when I'm really the best Christian that I can be? How many Bible studies do I need to go to a week? How much church do I need to be at? How much service does it take to be sure that I am doing it right? That kind of an attitude puts you right under the law. And it was during one of those moments, one of those tormenting moments, when I came across this verse. Oops, let's get it right here. Galatians 5.1 It is for freedom that Christ has set you free. Stand firm then and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. Let's look first at the context of this verse. Chapter 4, Paul is explaining about Abraham's children and how Abraham's children are not children of the slave woman. They are not children of Hagar, but they are children of the free woman. They are children of Sarah. They are children of the promise, the one who was promised, who would continue the line of Abraham and, and the line of Israel. And then, so then you have, you could almost have a therefore or a, the, a so then in between chapter four and the beginning of chapter five. So then, so therefore, Christ has set you free. Stand firm in that freedom. And then he goes on and talks specifically about the context of circumcision. But that was the context for the day. That was kind of the legal you got to be the best Christian in or, or say in order to be the best Christian you can possibly be, you better be circumcised. So we can apply that today to any time someone says to us, well, to be a Christian, you must dot, dot, dot. As soon as someone tells us we must, we should, we have to, those are words that are letting you know that someone is being a Judaizer. They are being a legalist Christian and they are attempting to put you under the law. And when you get to that place, then you are a slave to the law. When Paul says, stand fast and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery, he is saying, do not let the legalists pressure you into thinking that circumcision or any other outward act of obedience can be offered to God as a benefit to him and or as a means that he must then reward with some type of payment. The point of the passage is Christ did it all. Christ paid the price so that our admission to God is free. No admission, 
tear up the ticket. Christ was the ticket. Christ on the cross was the ticket. We don't need a ticket. We have it in Christ. And so there is nothing else that we can do beyond what Christ has done for us. Nothing else that we can do. No amount of prayer. No additional Bible study time. No, you know, one more Wednesday night Bible uh, going to church to add to our, our payment for enabling God, for coercing God, for getting God to love us more, take care of us a little bit better, or answer that prayer a little faster. Because Christ paid for it all. And in Him, we have perfect freedom. One of the things that really brought this to mind for me uh, very recently, yesterday, um, in our morning Bible study, which I love, by the way, thank you, Doris, for leading this month, um, we were talking about whether we've used this time when we're staying, some of us are staying at home more during the COVID pandemic, whether we've used this time to spend more time in the Word, more time with the Lord. And I commented that that had been my plan. I had thought when, you know, I first found out that I was going to have to work at home, I thought, oh good, you know, then I won't have the driving time, I won't have the get up, just get dressed and, you know, all that kind of time, and I can spend that time in prayer. And it hasn't happened. I have found that other things, the painting of my basement, the, the planting of rose bushes in my yard, all these things have kind of taken precedence. And I have felt some guilt about the fact that I have not spent more time with the Lord. And I started thinking, where does guilt come from? Well, this kind of guilt comes from the law, putting myself under the law. When I, and, and I realized that, why was I feeling guilty? And it's because I have some real needs from the Lord right now. I have been praying and asking the Lord. I, I actually pray Psalm 90, 17. Establish the work of my hands, O Lord. Establish the work of my hands. I am without a job right now. Concordia University Portland has closed. I need to be looking for work. I don't know for sure what I should do next. I know I don't want to stay in the exact same field that I was doing, assessment. I want to do something different. I don't know what that is. And I have been asking over and over, actually for years now, for the Lord to give me some new vision of what he wants me to do next. And there is a sense where I feel like if I could just spend enough time in prayer, if I just read the right Bible verse or was in the place, you know, in the right place, God would answer that. Well, you know what that is? That is a reciprocity kind of agreement. If I do this, then God will, God must answer me properly, quickly. And that is not the way it works, my friends. If it worked that way, Christ would not have needed to die for us. When I get myself into that kind of an attitude, I am dishonoring, oh gosh, I don't believe this. I am dishonoring what Christ has done for me. Christ died on the cross. He took our guilt, our shame, our perfectionism, whatever it is that you struggle with, my friends, he took that and nailed it to the cross. God loved you before. God loves you whether you're a perfectionist, whether you're not, whether you are under the law, whether you are not, whether you are doing Christianity right or you are not. He loves you. And that is why he sent Christ for you, because he wants a relationship with you. And he wanted that so bad that he sent a way for that to happen. And there is nothing that you can do 
Again, I've said it, no more Bible study. No, there's nothing you can add on to what Christ has already done. It's one of the things that I love about the Book of Concord. There's a lot of, um, oh, a lot of contextual things about the Pope and different things going on in the 1500s that I don't understand. But the one thing that Martin Luther kept coming back to is we honor Christ. And as soon as we look to our own merit, as soon as we look to the Pope, as soon as we look to anything else other than Christ to give us a relationship with God or to somehow get God to do something more for us that we think he hasn't done yet, then we are dishonoring Christ. We are not giving him the glory and honor that is due him for the incredible suffering that he went through for us. Whew. And I, the, I think a really good way to know whether you're putting yourself in that place, whether you're kind of trying to take the place of Christ, is by asking yourself, why do I feel guilty? Why do I feel guilty about not doing this or not doing that? Especially when it comes to our relationship with the Lord. And I think lots of times we'll realize that we feel guilty because we want something from God and we want to be able to do such and such in order to get God and to, to do something for us. And we need to remind ourselves that it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Free from the law. Free of the shoulds, the oughts, the we, you know, I need to do this in order for. Free of all of that. God knows that we are sinners. He knows that we are but dust. And he still wants a relationship with us. Christ died in spite of our failings. We will be loved by God and can live in that love relationship. If the Son has set you free, you are free indeed. And my friends, the Son has set you free. It's all done. He's already did it. And so you are free indeed. Now, your only command, stand firm. Stand firm. That's a command. That's an imperative. In the Greek, it is an imperative, meaning it's a command. So, so your only to do is to stand firm in the freedom of Christ. And I think right now, there's a lot of applications for this. And hopefully, through this little time I've been sharing, God has brought the applications that you need to your mind. But the application that I want to leave you with is this one. During this time of COVID and trying to figure out, you know, how to, how to start up church, especially if you are a person who, when we begin to go back to, um, to church, to the church building and being together, if you feel like you are not physically ready for that, do not let yourself be put under the law. I do not want you to feel like you are any less of a Christian. And you know, it, people may put you in that place under the law in very subtle ways. Oh, come on, just pray about it. If, if you know, God won't let you get sick with COVID by going to church, surely God would, wouldn't do that. You know, there's gonna be these subtle ways that people kind of, you know, meaning to be, be good Christians, put you under the law, but you remember that you are free in Christ to take care of the physical body that Christ has granted to you. And don't let yourself be put under the law. Stand, stand firm, stand free in the freedom that Christ has bought for you. And you watch online for as long as you need to. And I I ask then also that those, those of us who may be at church, that we 
grant our brothers and sisters who feel differently than us, who feel like they need to stay home for some time, grant them the freedom in Christ to stay home and that we can still reach out to them and connect with them through phone and computer. Take any guilty feelings that you might have right, right back to Christ. Give them to him. Place them, them at his feet and ask him to help you to stand firmly in the freedom that he paid and gave you. With that, let's pray. Lord, as Americans, I think we believe we understand freedom. But there is no freedom like the freedom that we have in Christ. It's so hard for us to grasp that Christ fully paid the price for us and that there really is nothing else that we have to do, that we should do, that we can do to get into God's good graces. Our old Adams want reciprocity. We want to think that we need to do something for your love. Holy Spirit, in spite of ourselves, help us to stand firm in the freedom that Christ has bought for us. Help us to grasp what it means for us in our everyday lives. Help us to freely live as free people, loved by you and in love with you. Amen. Amen. Christ be with you. Stand in his freedom this week. Amen.